Hey everyone, uh, in this video we will be seeing basics about Kubernetes uh, or basics about cloud native or basics about getting started, right? So, hey everyone, I am Kaili Kuparkar. I make content around DevOps, DevRel and open source ecosystem. So, let's get started. So, we are at our notes and uh, the notes link will be in description as always so the basics so it is really essential for uh, to understand some basic components before jumping uh, into kubernetes so we will be starting uh, like the certifications more the bigger focus is on kubernetes so there are some like kind of prerequisites you should be knowing and again this is not very very much into depth like in more diagrams and stuff but i will explain you enough uh, as a part of your revision right so yeah let's go ahead and start with virtual machines so virtual machine do not make uh, a best use of space but like apps are not isolated which could cause config conflict security problems and resource hogging so what do i mean by that so let's go ahead on the board maybe and i will i can uh, maybe show you in like really short so so say suppose you have a computer right so this is like a, my computer you have so uh, if this is your my computer uh, sorry for this maybe i can clear this um, i will try to keep it like good organized kind of thing so this is if this is your computer uh, what virtual machine uh, means is so what virtual machine means is it will like occupy oops so it will occupy uh, some of the space in your computer so it will occupy some space it will have some memory and uh, all the stuff related right but the application you host here the application you host here so it it would be like replica of your computer so it would be like a replica of your computer exactly similar uh, like uh, say suppose there are like different versions of in your computer right so suppose for example imagine this so there is a node version of like a 14 but your application whichever you cloned from github has of 16 so now it will conflict here right so your application won't run here uh on your system right so that would happen similarly in your virtual machine as well and it would uh, again as the issue says it would uh, do a resource hogging say suppose application has uh, captured like a create taken a resource then if like more important application wants to access it it won't be able to access it because the resource has occupied the uh, space and memory of the your uh, virtual machine and it is all that stuff it's so it's kind of a replica your of your uh, computer so whatever problem might occur in, in your computer might also occur in your virtual machine so that is like a very very big uh, like over the top overview of that so uh, you you can watch uh, youtube videos i will link uh, some of the youtube videos down uh, in the description explaining about uh, difference between virtual machines and uh, containerizations but this was this is really like in the simpler format that it's a replica of your computer so whatever problems might occur uh, while pro like program development uh, in your computer might also occur uh, in your virtual machine yeah that is it so this was for uh, virtual machines uh, and if you go down so now containers so what are containers so containers allow you to run multiple apps which have virtually isolated from each other so what does that mean is so this was here so if you uh, app, like put an application here uh, it was able to run here then it will take some resource and stuff it would uh, get like there is say suppose this is uh say suppose this is a library in your virtual machine and which is access so if this updates it then the other application might face an issue because it was using maybe version 14 and you upgraded it to version 16 to run this application now this application is not running something like that but for uh containerization what uh happens happens is so if this is your machine right so uh if this is your machine then this is your container and this will have its own stuff this will have its own stuff and if this is the second container so i will say uh, container one 
and container two. This can be imagined as uh, so that's why we do comparison between virtual machines and containers because they are above the layer of your own computer and stuff. So uh, virtual machine also runs as a virtual on your computer and containers also run as kind of on a virtual space on your computer or your local machine right but uh, the difference is like virtual machine as i said earlier it runs exactly as your computer but containers do not do that so containers are isolated so any external effects uh, would not uh, affect the container and internal ones uh, won't affect the outer world so whatever happens inside the container remains inside the container uh, and similar with this so they do not affect each other they do not conflict with each other so that's why containers are used as uh, industry standard you can say to deploy your application because this won't affect anything outside and anything from uh, outside uh, would not affect the container so this is how the containers and virtual machines are compared uh, roughly and I, again you can see the resources are not hogged and they have their own resources given to each container so they just play with each uh, their own resources and do not affect any other so they are isolated they do not care about outer world and outer world cannot affect them something like that good mentality to, to have actually so going ahead what are microservices so uh, microservices like quick glance microservices are apps which are responsible for one thing so uh, i will give you example and functionality are isolated and stateless so these are the two main points you should be remembering about microservices is multiple apps which are responsible for one thing and functionality that are isolated and stateless let's see what uh, does microservice mean great so now uh, just a second i'll just pull this out here okay great so microservices let's say suppose i will give you a really rough example of microservices and you will understand it hopefully so this is your website so this is your uh, website dot com great and this has a, a navigation bar this has a navigation bar and then it has like a side um, side thingy where you get all like a index and stuff and uh, then there is like the main body of the page right so uh, essentially what uh, like I will explain you what like monolith is as well now. So now you have HTML code for this web, uh, website right. So you have HTML code where uh, entire code is written uh, here HTML. So now if you so say suppose if you go ahead and just imagine it if you just put it inside a container as I said it's like a virtualized machine where you run your application and which are isolated thing is clear right so now we go ahead and run this into the container so now entire thing is inside a single container right and in a single container here because you have defined your website here so this is called monolith because entire application so this is just a front end but i'm trying to explain it. but there would be back end your database and everything inside a single container kind of thing is called as monolith architecture but what if uh, i want to update uh, the navigation bar so if i have to update the navigation bar then i will have to update the code and now the entire container is rerun again how we do we edit a thing then we go to the website then we reload and then entire uh, website is reloaded and we can see the updated uh, navigation bar right but what if i want to just update a navigation bar and not uh, affect any other things right so what i can do is uh, as i did earlier uh, oops i think i uh, deleted all the stuff so okay it's here so it's here so what i will do is in this scenario what i will do is i will put uh, okay just a second i will make a container okay uh, and what i will do is i will put uh, my navigation co bar code here uh, then i will put the sidebar like code here and the third one i will put the main body code here and i will uh, interconnect them like this something like that 
I will interconnect them to, so that they can talk to each other uh, under like a single use case. So th there are like small parts of application doing one same thing. So now if I want to just update uh, the navigation bar, so I have to just work with this and th this would not affect uh, the other parts of the application, something like that. So now you can get a higher, higher overview of the application. Like you have a front end, you have a uh, back end, you have a database and now you just want to update your front end. So all you have to do is work with this and these are all uh, like, uh, isolated so you don't uh, you don't affect this so whatever change happen happen here and they are connected with each other which in uh, in the end does just one thing which is run your application so they are all these components are working towards uh, running your application but they are isolated on their own as well so they are isolated uh, as i said they are isolated and stateless what does that mean is uh, say suppose uh, stateless means it does not hold any data so uh, if say suppose uh, how we can say uh, the stateless is uh, uh, for example a uh, stateless is say suppose you type in your password uh, in like uh, say suppose uh, the best example of maybe stateless would be um, your incognito mode so if you just log in and password on your incognito and if you close it then the when when you open the incognito mode next time this data won't be there uh unlike when you uh go to like non-incognito mode you put your password and stuff and you save it maybe it does not save it remember me after you uh close the window after you reopen the browser as well if you go to website you will be able to uh check it out again because the passwords and uh, everything is saved so this data which is saved that is stateful but the thing uh, the data that is not saved after uh, the application is uh, terminated then that is called as stateless so th this server uh, this uh, microservice architecture is uh, stateless and uh, isolated so isolated here and it would be stateless so even if it goes down and new one comes up the new one comes up as a new fresh one and it does not have any errors and stuff that might have caused error or something like that it does not save stuff it's it is stateless so this was like for uh, quickly for uh, microservices so here you go and kubernetes so we will learn a lot about kubernetes here and the kubernetes video is already there on my youtube channel to get a quick glance and get a hands-on on kubernetes so please go there check that video out do a hands-on deploy application to kubernetes hands-on and then maybe resume this video something like that but yeah let's go ahead so uh, the kubernetes is open source container orchestration system for deployment scaling and management so this is kind of a definition so it is open source container orchestration system so it is a container orchestration system what is that i already explained it is like uh, uh, like a orchestrator for your uh, whenever there is an orchestra there is an orchestrator which tells which group to play and then which group to play and what to do something like that uh, and that is similar with containers say suppose there are 100 of containers there should be a like a class monitor to monitor them and tell them what to do right so that's what uh, kubernetes does in shorts but go ahead and uh, check that out in very much detail deploy one of the application on kubernetes so you'll understand what i am telling about right now the unique component here is pod so uh, the uniqueness of kubernetes is pod and pod is the smallest uh, configurable unit on kubernetes please note that down pod is the smallest configurable unit on kubernetes it is not container containers are placed inside the pod but the last thing you can configure or the smallest br smallest brick you can configure in kubernetes is pod so that is a really important point you should note that down and the pod is group of one or more containers with shared storage network resources and other settings so we can uh, get an overview of it as here so say suppose this is pod this is pod and this is like the smallest configuration you uh, the la last configuration you can do is would be on pod uh, generally there is only one container uh, added 
to one pod but that is not a hard rule you can place multiple containers uh under in the same pod so say suppose pod name is pod 1 pod 1 and uh, this is like container 1 container 2 container 3 now they the containers are isolated we know that right the containers are isolated but what pod can do is it will share a common network common network and we will see this in networking and common storage so say suppose uh, there is like say suppose uh, some file system so uh, say suppose you have your passwords all the passwords save in a separate file system here in like hard coded file that we will learn everything like all the good practices and uh, recommended practices that are done the professional practices along the way but i am giving you example here so say suppose there is a file uh, that uh, you want to uh, say suppose uh, password kind of thing so it is in a like a system which is like shared storage system kind of thing uh, not literally the file system but kind of storage uh, think of it as a storage a shared storage so the network what network can do is it can help one container to talk to other container kind of thing uh, something like that and then storage can help you so this container say suppose runs a application which needs uh, food delivery data then it gets the data from here similarly this application will get the food delivery data food delivery data so that containers don't have to save everything here it can just share the same data and the application is there so whatever application is running here you will get exactly here you will get exactly the application here that's what i am trying to say uh, here so it shares uh, network and storage uh, here and kets is ideal for my uh, microservice architecture as i said earlier you can uh, take front end put it inside a container take a back end put it inside a container uh take a database put it inside a container and that's how you can do a microservice architecture and once you once you want to just update your front end then what you can do is remove the front end pod and put in the new front end pod and now your database and uh, your uh, the back end server are as it is they are not touched but your front end is updated and that's what is all about all the microservices uh and that was all the basics so please go through the uh, virtual machine and containers video in the description below that would give you a really good understanding of it a microservice video is also given in the description and go through the exam pro videos about this basics and stuff these are the similar ones their notes are from the similar course and this is the kubernetes i hope you are able to understand the microservices kubernetes what it is it does and uh, it is basically about the pod uniqueness of pod in kubernetes uh, uh, because there are like docker swarm and other, other 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 orchestration engines as well but we are learning about kubernetes so we should know about the uniqueness and stuff there so this is the pod what are the microservices i hope i was able to make you understand microservices really easily and uh, get this point so please uh, remember these points and what are containers and difference between virtual machines and stuff yeah so that is it for this video if you like the video make sure you hit the like button uh, if you want to get notified about such videos in the future as well make sure you subscribe to the channel it really helps support the channel and i will see you in the next video with the kubernetes overview so stay tuned and i will see you next time bye